Welcome back. Well, this next story is about a technology that could revolutionize the natural gas industry. And it was invented and will be manufactured right here in this province. It's a way of transporting natural gas by ship in specially designed containers called fiber-reinforced plastic pressure vessels. They look like this, and hundreds of them would fit into a ship like this. Right now, natural gas has to be transported by pipeline or by freezing it, shipping it in that form, and then bringing it back to natural gas at a special facility at the other end. It's expensive, time-consuming, and it limits natural gas extraction to places that are easily accessible. But that could all change now, and all due to a St. John's company called Transocean Gas. Testing of the technology begins today, and this morning I caught up with the inventor. And I'm here with Steve Campbell on the deck of his home office. Steve, thank you for joining us. Welcome Steve, of course, is the inventor uh, of this technology and the man who runs the company. Steve, tell me about it. Well, uh, we uh, came up with the concept of using fiber-reinforced plastic pressure vessels to transport compressed natural gas by ship by looking for a way to transport originally Hibernia gas to, uh, to Newfoundland. Uh, ironically, when we did find this technology and patented the concept, it was existing technology already used for uh, compressed natural gas fueled buses and fleet vehicles in the United States and realized that if these pressure vessels were made slightly larger, they could accommodate compressed natural gas in a ship. And we patented that concept and uh, soon after found that it was actually a global need, not just one for uh, ourselves here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So this technology is actually, I mean, it's not brand new. It's just something that you took and you decided to redesign it for this industry. Tell me where this came from. <clears throat> Originally, uh, I guess, uh, Apollo 13, when the oxygen cylinder blew and they had uh, an emergency situation, uh, NASA realized that uh, they could have no more steel pressure vessels in space, and they went to fiber-reinforced. Uh, and actually, in, when Skylab fell to Earth then in uh, 1979, the only recognizable piece of debris was the oxygen cylinder, about four feet in diameter by about six feet long, and it was a fiber reinforced but with a stainless steel liner. Uh, it was still under pressure and actually uh, resides now in the Smithsonian Institute. Uh, a few years later, in the early 90s, there was a company then that had developed a plastic lined pressure vessel for increased uh, light weight uh, for the automotive industry. It was this technology that uh, I looked at and said if it was made slightly larger, it would be ideal for compressed natural gas transportation by ship. Anybody else in the world doing this? No, there's nobody else in the world. I hold a patent in several countries throughout the world. So tell me why this would make a difference. I mean, what kind of natural gas are you getting at? Well, approximately there are 6,000 trillion standard cubic feet of gas in the world. That's a discovered. lot of gas. It's a lot of gas in comparison to our 10 to 20 trillion standard cubic feet off our shores. Uh, approximately half of that gas is considered stranded. That is non-economical to transport by pipeline or liquefied natural gas. And uh, so there's a niche there to be filled. There's a significant void. And compressed, simply compressed natural gas uh, is that niche. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get at that gas that's hard to get at and transport it out of there. That's about correct. 50 percent of the world's reserves, including some off of our coast here? Well, that's correct. Uh, what we have off our coast is also considered somewhat stranded. It's in a harsh environment and difficult to get at, uh, un un unavailable for pipeline due to, uh, uh, due to uh, iceberg scour. And that is what uh, stimulated me to look for a way to transport compressed natural gas big thing for this province? Well, it could be a very big thing, a uh, big thing for the world, but uh, it's our intention to actually manufacture the pressure vessels and lease them uh, to those with ships that wish to transport gas. And manufacture them here? Manufactured right here in Newfoundland and Labrador, yes. Uh, we've actually made a, uh, an application to the Bull Arm Development Corporation to use uh, Bull Arm facility as our first manufacturing facility. We've also had expressions of interest from Trapassi, uh, Botwood, uh, Carbonier, many other communities throughout our province here that would like to see manufacturing done in their uh, neighborhoods as well. One last question, and i got to ask you this. It's a very warm day. A lot of scientists are saying that the reason why we're seeing such warm temperatures is global warming. <laughs> Do we really need to get at that, those 50% reserves of, uh, of natural gas? Well, yes, uh, power generation is the uh, big drive, and uh, the world is going to consume more energy uh, as it goes on. And all uh, uh, indications of that 
uh, natural gas has now become the fuel of choice because it is a clean burning in comparison to coal or oil. And uh, for this uh, reason, uh, they expect gas to increase in consumption by 70%. Currently, right now, the uh, world is consuming some 90 trillion standard cubic feet a year. This is expected by 2025 to go to 150 trillion standard cubic feet. There's going to be a strong demand for, to access these additional reserves. See, thank you very much for joining us. Thank You're welcome, Linda.